everybody. Hi, guys. Well, from cold Salt Lake City, Utah, <laughs> bitter, bitter cold, <laughs> it's Thank God I'm Atheist, the podcast. I'm Frank. And I'm Dan. And coming up today, we're going to be talking about one of my favorite topics, it's Dan. Because it's the most beautiful thing you can imagine <laughs> in the whole world. Heaven. We're gonna we're gonna talk. It, oh, the topic this week is absolute <laughs> heaven. It's heavenly. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna talk about yeah, yeah sort of uh, when you know life after this oh. mortal coil. Oh, I know. I can't wait. It'll be exciting. <laughs> It'll be fun. Full yeah, of adventure. You, you give up a lot when you go atheist. Yeah, that's on true. That one. That's you know? true. It's uh, it, yeah, <laughs> we're we're really missing out. Anyway, we'll discuss all of that. Uh, that's uh, coming up later. So. Later. What, what do you got? You got a story? Well, I want to do one last wrap up on the war on Christmas. Okay, because because um, we've we've made it through another season. <laughs> the casualties are are limited, but they're there. Yes. So wrap it up for us. Well. You know, like in in this country, we have sort of this purported war on Christmas. Well, oh, yeah. I, I'd like to go to Brunei. Oh, <laughs> that uh, where, where there is an outright ban on Christmas. Yeah, there's no war on Christmas. You just, just it's not even there. Fuck your Christmas. That's what um, the war on Christmas is. Apparently, violators of this ban can get up to five years in prison. Wow, twenty thousand dollars. Of fines, yeah, and uh, uh, and and some sort of combination of of those two, if, you know. Sure. If, if they don't just go with one or the other, it's, how it's far some do you have to go in in order to run afoul of this? Like, if there's a tree in your house, uh, that's bad. That's, that's bad. Yeah. Okay, so the list of possible offenses. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, you cannot uh, use or wear Christian symbols like a cross. Oh wow! But that's just a generic. That's just part of the across the board. You're not allowed to Christian do that. ban, right? Okay. Uh, you cannot light candles. Okay. Okay. Bad. Wait, you do can't not light, light candles. candles. Do not light candles, Dan. Can you light candles if they're like scented? It- if the no, well, I was gonna say, if it, is there is there such a thing as a Muslim candle? Is there? I, I see. I don't know. I, I but um, but I, I would say lighting candles in a Christian sort of way, right? Sure, is in some way that smacks of Christianity. Then yes, that's bad. <laughs> um, you cannot put up a Christmas tree. Uh-huh. Uh, any kind of Christmas decorations. Sure, no. You cannot wear Santa hats. <laughs> What you about, cannot sing religious songs. What if you had a red and white hijab? Ooh, I don't know. With s- fur. with like some fluff, <laughs> so like a, some white fur. A red hijab with white fur. Can you? I think that I, I, I think you're in some gray territory. That there. is pretty. That's yeah. <laughs> uh, um, and please do not send any Christmas cards. Yeah, banned. Damn. No, yeah, you get you'll get that person in trouble. Or like, if you really don't like that person, yeah, just send them a Christmas card. Yeah, I guess about seventy percent of the population of Brunei is Muslim, right? Um, and Only seventy, really. Seventy percent, um, and uh, about thirteen percent is Buddhist. Oh, okay. And uh, and then that's followed by um, you know indigenous folk with their you know, indigenous beliefs or whatever. Sure. Uh, Christians are about uh, 10% of the population. Really? Um, yeah. That's and way higher than I would have guessed. They are, um, and then about 10% of the population does not profess any religion. The 10%, the, the Christians, however, you know, I mean, I, I don't know, they, they are allowed to sort of be Christian in private. Right. Okay. But. Just don't flaunt it. If if you're gonna do anything, Christians who are celebrating Christmas, uh, it says here, you know, you have to do it in private, and you have to warn the local authorities beforehand <laughs> that you're gonna be doing that. This. You're gonna Christian that you're gonna yeah. I'm going to Christian now, yeah. and I and I don't know. I don't I'd know like if a there's permit an to Christian, please outright ban on Christmas trees, <laughs> period, or if, like, Christians can put up a little Christmas tree, or if they're just limited. I don't know how it right. plays out in practice, but... Or if you get, like, can you have, a like, a ficus tree, and then... But you can't accidentally... There's no putting an ornament on that thing. Then you're in trouble. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. Oh, you're in trouble. Non, non-decorated, non-associated tree. Oh, non-decorated, <laughs> non-associated tree. 
You would fill my life with <laughs> I'm blase. <laughs> I'm definitely just singing about you for no reason. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, I guess they're uh, absolute monarch, Sultan Hassan al who is is oh, 69 yeah. years old. He introduced the, the Sharia. The famous Sultan of Brunei. Ah, uh, yeah. He introduced Sharia um, back in uh, the spring of 2014. I don't know what it seems was, to be going really well. What it was like beforehand. <laughs> uh, a lot of people are not so happy about uh, these bans on 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 on. Uh, oh, on uh, Christmas. Who's unhappy? Um, your average Bruneian. Oh, um, really? I don't know. Uh, but uh, I guess Twitter is all a buzz um, about. Uh, uh, this and there, a lot of people have been posting pictures of, them, of themselves wearing Santa hats. Oh, those yeah. rebels! Yeah, uh, in front of Christmas trees, often. Wow. Um, yeah, but they're just yeah. they're just courting uh, you know, I, trouble. It, it is amazing to me these kind of bands like this um, because I mean, here's a quote from their Ministry of Religious Affairs um, official, yeah, uh, head honcho. Um, uh, quote, enforcement measures are intended to control the act of celebrating Christmas excessively and openly because they could can they they could damage the beliefs of the Muslim community. <laughs> really? I mean, it's it's, God, it's is, is, is Islam that weak? Here's the thing. I think I don't think believers understand how frequently they declare their own beliefs fragile. <laughs> how frequently yeah, right? they're just like. Like I heard a thing I, I I don't remember what it was what the context was but I remember distinctly that a guy was like oh oh I do remember the context now and yeah. it's actually one of the stories that I'm doing oh. so I'm just going to jump to my Go story right to it Dan <laughs> it was here's the thing um so there's been a new theory that's come out you you know how sort of there's that whole there's there's the Jewish rabbinical tradition of of scholarship Yes. And of study, yeah, and of and of, of serious scholarship, yeah, really, yeah, very uh, in depth uh, uh, study and and stuff. Well, a new theory has come out. Um, there was a book published uh, called "What Really Happened in the Garden of Eden" by oh. by Professor Zioni Zevit. Oh, I want uh, to know from the American Jewish University. This sounds fascinating. In Maryland, what did happen? Did um, well, here's the thing. So. This is a theory about uh, the verse that says that Eve was created from Adam's rib. Yeah. Okay. We, you know, you know that the, the theory is that, that Adam was chilling on yeah. earth, having a good time. He had too many ribs. Bored out of his mind, <laughs> needed a woman. Uh -huh. God was like, sure, let me just uh, rip that out of you and right. I'll make a girl out of it. Right. Uh, apparently, uh, Professor Zevit has decided... The the Hebrew word tsela uh, does not translate as rib, but instead can be understood to mean, quote, limbs sticking out sideways from an upright human body. Oh. Now, here's what's tricky about that. Uh, I, I think the, the place from which he is coming is the notion that Whatever God took from Adam to create Eve, uh -huh. men don't have anymore. So oh. for a long time, people believed that men actually had fewer ribs than women oh. because they weren't counting. Because <laughs> apparently they didn't know how counting works. Okay, right. But that was just a, this belief. So here's, so here's his theory. Knowing that men couldn't possibly still have the thing that God used to make women, uh -huh. and knowing the physiology of the animal kingdom in which most mammals, the male actually has a bone in his penis. Oh, boy. What's clearly happened is that God took the penis bone from oh. Adam and made Eve out of that. Oh. Obviously. Oh. That makes a lot of sense. <laughs> 
I thought it was going to be boobs or something like that. No, no, no. I thought Adam originally oh, had yeah, boobs. Adam had boobs, and then he was like, and then God was like, Let God me just took the <laughs> boobs. I'll just take those off. And, and then we'll just, uh, bloop, let's form a woman with boobs. And Adam there. was like, oh, yeah, that's much better. Yeah, yeah, I like yeah. them over there. Yeah, put those on her. I still have access to them, right? <laughs> yeah, can I just... Uh, <laughs> say, I liked them when they were over here. Right, exactly. I was playing with those. <laughs> hey, wait, I was. those were mine. Oh, well. <laughs> Hope she likes it if I play with them. Oh. Anyway, yeah, so there you go. Uh, apparently, the, uh, the you know, it is actually a bit of an anomaly for humans not to have a bone in their penis. Really? Yeah. Um, huh, I guess I didn't. Even, even chimpanzees have have penile bones. And yet somehow we got around. Baculum. Got around to calling them boners. Yeah, yeah. We're just That's ironic. We're just nutty that That's way. <laughs> we're just nuts. What are we doing? Oh, silly humans. Anyway, so, so what I was telling telling you before. So about, wait a second. So where did this bone go in Eve? I think uh, uh, he molded it and shaped it, maybe whittled uh, <laughs> until it became a girl. Oh. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. I mean, you know. Makes a lot of sense. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Of course it does. Um, the, uh, so where I was, the, the, the transition you'll recall from our earlier part of our conversation mm-hmm. that I was transitioning through this because of, uh, a guy who I was rem- recalling a man who had responded to this because this was published, uh, the, this section of this book uh-huh. was, was, uh, was discussed in a, in a, uh, quarterly, no, in some sort of magazine called biblical archaeology review uh-huh. and uh and it went unnoticed whatever and then it was published in some and then some you know uh christian blogs or whatever started to pick it up uh-huh. and then everybody just went ape shit crazy and this guy <clears throat> has started to receive all sorts of <clears throat> angry emails and whatnot and one of them said i won't read anything that would cause me to doubt my christian beliefs blah 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 Okay. Yet another person just admitting right. how fucking easy it would be to topple his Christian beliefs, right. apparently, yeah. in well, yeah. his mind. Because, I mean, it's just a house of cards, and they know it. They they seem they, to know it. They, they, they know it. <clears throat> they I mean, seem to know that, like, I believe in something that's really easy to make me not believe in. Right. So I have to close my eyes, and I have to plug my ears, and I have to go la, 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 a lot. Because uh, it just doesn't stand up. Uh, because interestingly enough, it doesn't. It doesn't. They're, it they're, doesn't. He's right. They are absolutely right to be incredibly fearful of difference <laughs> and 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 information. Right. Because the really smart people who who hold on, who are who are thinkers, yeah, and who do engage the conversation, boy, they got to do some twists and turns. Yeah. They got to do some clever thinking. Oh, yeah. to maintain that belief. Well, and 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 let's say like Muslims with you know going up against christmas uh, christians they they hit the ball out of the park with christmas oh yeah like it is a fantastic holiday they made a good one yeah it's a good holiday muslims it's got nothing like that nothing all Mus- of their Muslim- is misery they have right. a month their big month-long thing is fasting right is, is you don't get to eat the big treat is like <laughs> eating dates <laughs> Yeah, that that does nothing for me. I I I, I don't no. want to participate in that. No, you guys but suck. You dangle Christmas in front of me. Oh my god. Oh yeah, it's great. Yeah, even the baby Jesus is cute, and nativity scenes are fun. And sure, sure. Christmas music is is. Well, I was about to say beautiful. Not all of it. Some of it's beautiful. A lot of it's very mostly. Lovely. It's just nostalgic and sad. Yeah, I you mean, know? if we can keep Mariah Carey out of it, there's some lovely <laughs> Christmas music. <laughs> So. But anyway, yeah, they, they need fear. <laughs> they have, yeah, they should be afraid. Yeah, because you, you get a Muslim start looking over his shoulder at you know his, na- his Christian neighbor, and they're all having that fun. Yeah, I mean, we know what happened to Hanukkah, uh. which was not a, a holiday that Jews really, you know, yeah. it's a little thing or whatever. Yeah. And then all of their neighbors start doing Christmas, and they're like, yeah, we. We do presents too. <laughs> look at look at how fun Hanukkah is. Uh, I was uh, on uh, right before, right around Christmas. Uh, HBO now had um, a, like basically like a playlist oh? of Christmas 
stuff okay christmas like it was like an hbo a very hbo christmas or something like that okay and so you could go and it was like all the episodes of their shows that were like christmas themed. <laughs> okay. okay and there was sex in the city <laughs> and so i watched the, because i was like well what okay all right it's the one where charlotte converts to judaism and she gives up her christmas tree oh right it's, oh. it's a, the episode takes place in like Who July, could forget? right? But she actually sets up a Christmas tree before she goes through the full conversion process, <laughs> so that she can have her one last Christmas. And I'm like, this is <laughs> so weird. Just keep Christmas. Be well, that that's what her Jewish husband or soon to be husband is telling her. Okay, just come on, we'll put up a tree. Who cares? Right? You know, that's what Jews do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And, oh god and she was just like she was like no if i'm doing this i'm doing it for real can i just say i'm I hate giving that up show <laughs> that fucking show i hate it so much it is so bad it's like so bad. like i i remember when it was like when it, when they were still like freshly coming out uh-huh. like there was sort of a certain fascination with it well, there, and like, it was different then i don't know that's just one of those shows that was a product of its time and by its time i meant the literally the 30 seconds after it came out and then it started to get stale really fucking well fast. yeah and i mean it was unlike anything else on television it was you know it was while people were anyway it had boobs right. it had like boobs that. Um, that was fine but nonetheless, um, <laughs> yeah, it was very interesting to wa- watch it sort of 10 years, 15 years on yeah. and, and just be like, oh, my God. It doesn't like, hold up. It's bad. It Sarah doesn't. Jessica Parker is, like, terrible. <laughs> <laughs> and we're, actually, Dan, of all the angry email we've ever gotten, <laughs> you think this, is, this, this is, is the one we've now that we've crossed the line, I'm sure. We've now toppled the domino. <laughs> I just said Sarah Jessica Parker was bad in Sex and the City. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, they were all bad. It was a terrible show. <laughs> Not Kim Cattrall. She was wonderful. She was terrible. <laughs> just awful. All right. Moving right along. What do you got? Uh, well, uh, here's a local story, Dan. Oh, from here that in has, Utah? Yeah. It has some far reaching. Uh, effects, I guess. Oh, um, or at least far-reaching interest. Uh, our uh, our governor, Governor Gary Herbert, yes, um, it was one of the Republican governors who uh, decided that he was going to cut off funding for Planned Parenthood. Right, right. No more state funding. No more state funding. Which was pretty disastrous. Which is a pretty disastrous thing here. Like. There are a lot of people getting health care from, oh. from Planned Parenthood. Oh, yeah, so. absolutely. Pretty rough. Uh, and so what has happened is that a two-judge panel um, of the 10th U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals um, just, this, uh, just this most recent Wednesday okay. um, reversed a lower court's decision that would have allowed Herbert to cut off the funding right so what i know what i know of this case isn't much uh one of the lawyers in this case is kate kelly who our Mm -hmm. regular listeners might remember because she was part of the mormons be nice to women movement uh and the mormons said no and kicked her out right so she's now she's now working for planned parenthood yes she went she went full like liberal like fuck it all (laughs) after that well, anyway, um, this is this is this is really important, um, okay? Because uh, clearly, Planned Parenthood. Um, well, I mean, because I mean, there was this whole hubbub about like w- these videos that were like were making it seem like they were selling like fetal tissue for research and whatnot, right? Which right. they're not. I right. mean, they do donate fetal tissue for research, right? But this was like <clears throat> it was like that they were making money, right? Off of off of aborted uh, fetuses. fetuses, right? Um, and, uh, but Planned Parenthood does so much more, uh, than that, um, right. you know, sex education, uh, they do testing for sexually transmitted diseases. They provide healthcare, right. uh, essential healthcare for, for, for women and for men. Actually, they do some, some really? services for men. I did not know that Yeah, actually. Uh, and, uh, and so anyway, it's um, not planned motherhood, Frank, <laughs> It's planned parenthood. Uh, what's important to remember is that federal funds 
already cannot be used for abortions. Right. Um, and uh, pl- any any abortions provided by Planned Parenthood are, 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 you know, they use funds that they get from other sources. Right. For that. Uh, and, uh, and so this is, this is awesome. This is, this is really good that, uh, these judges are saying to be douchebags like governor Herbert, uh, fuck off. No, sorry. Yeah. You can't do that. Well, and the lower court, it was a really big blow when the lower court said it ruled against them. Mm -hmm. So it's nice that they got this injunction. Yeah. So it's good. I thought that was just important to. Keep us updated on what's going on with with that. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Uh, I'm going to take us to Phoenix. Okay. uh, Land of Arizona, where uh, police officers have... uh, There was was a a killing. Uh, Police officers were informed that there may be a body in a house, and they went there and found uh, 39-year-old Anitra Braxton who uh, initially said she was alone, but it turns out she had a body under a towel on her sofa. A towel? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Covered with a towel, <laughs> sitting on the sofa. Okay, the body of whom? Uh, the body of the girl that she had shot in the eye, apparently, uh, allegedly. Okay. Uh, that she admitted to, so not uh, so allegedly by her. And what was her relationship to this person? Uh, I'm unclear on that point, but... Uh, the point, the, the 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 interesting point for us is that she uh, committed this crime, saying that her uh, that that the the victim, uh, Crystal Hillman, a uh, twenty year old, w- didn't believe in God. <sighs> oh, God, and that's why she needed to die. And uh... then this, and then the lady left the body on her sofa for like three days, as a shrine to God. Oh my god! Uh, you'll we won't be surprised <laughs> to learn that one of the she, lines, the, okay. the last line in this article that I'm reading, uh, says family members say she suffers from mental illness. Oh really? No shit. Huh. Really? You took you kind of buried that. Yeah, exactly. Pretty deep into the story. Yeah. Um, and, Should, and and the thing is that mental illness is is not something to laugh at, and and you know god, it's no. the real reason that this woman was murdered was because this other woman was mentally ill, but. The fact of the matter is, I, I guess the reason that I thought that it was okay to bring this up on our show is mostly because when you provide, it's the same thing that we've talked about before, but when you provide a framework that says, we know who's good and we know who's bad, ah, uh, yeah, and then you give that framework to a mentally ill person, uh, they might kill somebody. Yeah. And, that's, and they, they have. And they do. We see that. It happens. It happens a lot. Here's another. The the guy who shot up the Planned Parenthood. Yep. Um, he had the go-ahead from Jeebus. Yep. That's, uh, that's, not, a good, that's not a good thing. It's not Why? a good thing. Why does Jesus approve these things? He, he needs just, to get a little more discerning about what's coming across his yeah. desk. It feels, <laughs> a, little it feels a little haphazard, doesn't you know? it? Yeah. Maybe, maybe mental illness is just a direct line to psycho god. To <laughs> the fourth member of the Godhead. Right, exactly. <laughs> there's like there's like God, there's Jesus, there's the Holy Spirit, and then there's Dwayne. <laughs> and Dwayne is not a very good God. <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving on <laughs> right now. All right. Uh well, Dan. Yeah. How so there's there's this thing that we enjoy in this country mm-hmm. called uh religious freedom oh do we i mean we have some of that we have we we do have a, a we, good a we, goodly portion of yes. that yes we have lots of it yeah we have we have religion in spades <laughs> we have lots and of religion we have some freedom surrounding it yes um well the question put forth to the public in a recent uh oh survey uh-huh is uh how uh, they're trying to get to the to the bottom of how strongly Americans support the freedom of religion. Oh yeah, right. Um and it turns out that Americans on a whole 82% of Americans mm. say that it is very or extremely important 
for Christians to be allowed to practice freely. <laughs> well, well, Compared you... with only 61% oh. who say that Muslims should be allowed to practice freely. <laughs> well, yeah, there's no... Okay, there's no surprise there. <laughs> but Jesus Christ, people. Jews come in at 72%. <laughs> Mormons, 67%. <laughs> And for people with no religion, 63%. Oh, my God, you assholes. <laughs> it's so amazing that they can't mm. see what they're saying. Yeah. Like, 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 literally, what they're saying is, I don't believe in the concept of religious freedom. No. No. I they're don't saying, believe in that. They're saying that they believe that they should be allowed right. I to... To practice their faith. I believe in the concept of religious superiority mm -hmm. and exactly the opposite of what the U.S. Constitution is trying to help exactly. out. Exactly. Exactly uh, just the opposite. Because, you know, the Puritans famously yeah. came to this country for freedom of religion and then immediately turned around and wanted it only for themselves yeah the truth is that they didn't come here for freedom of religion that's just what we are told when we're kids in school they came here because they weren't allowed to oppress everybody else right they so came they wanted here to come here and freely be themselves and assholes and, 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 and oppressed they, they wanted they wanted others. a totalitarian religious regime yeah and they couldn't have that in england because in england they were everybody was saying uh n no thank you we'll yeah I so they they I were looking so. for religious freedom <laughs> to be to, to make sure that nobody else got religious yeah, freedom. Exactly. The freedom to oppress others. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. You know. Um and it's not like we've always gotten along very well in this country no. religiously. No. Um and so when it works, it works because we're all just kind of doing our thing and letting everybody else do their thing religiously yeah. or not religiously but anyway um so it is interesting there are some uh uh party breakdowns oh, oh well i don't i'm gonna guess that i'm not gonna be surprised here either <laughs> but let's go <laughs> what did we say we said 82 percent of americans on, on a whole right uh think that christians should be able to be free i want to know who these people are are that are saying i mean it's probably like is it us that are the twenty percent that are like no, they shouldn't be able to practice freely? I don't know. Like eighty two, only eighty two percent think that they should be able, Christians should be able to practice their religion freely. That's crazy to me. Well, I mean, what percentage of the country is not Christian? Right, but everybody should. Okay, go on. Right. All right. Okay. So anyway, among Republicans, eighty eight percent place high uh, importance on protecting religious freedom for Christians. Right. Um. And their number for Muslims, which was 67 nationally, uh, is only 60%. 60% for Muslims. Mm. Um, and among Democrats, um, they're a little closer together. 83% uh, uh, for protecting Christians and 67% uh, for <laughs> uh, Muslims. Yep. Uh, so Not much better. Yeah. Not much better. And this is a nice summing up uh, at the end of the article. Overall, 8 out of 10 Americans said it was important or extremely important for people like themselves to be able to exercise religion. <laughs> freely. Uh, I mean, that's the, that's the thing, isn't it? <laughs> the real poll people should have said, like themselves. Do, you, do you think that you should be able to do what you like to do? <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, I yeah, do. Yeah. How about everybody else? Well, maybe not. Maybe not, because they're kind of scary. They, they wear them funny hats. I don't know. I Their don't, funny hats are different than our funny hats. I don't trust it. I don't like it. <laughs> uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to continue with the idea of church. We're going to be talking about church now. Okay. Uh, there has been a disturbing trend. No. In churches across the country, around the world. Oh, Dan. So videos so cool. have started popping up. Of pastors on hoverboards. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's everywhere. They are everywhere. These little, so this is these two-wheeled, they're like a Segway without the, without the center post that you hold on to. Yeah, there's nothing hover no, about no, no. these things. No, no, no. 
that they, was but a, they, that, they they magically can sort of just read your mind right yeah exactly about where you want to go yeah well it, it i imagine it it involves leaning <laughs> uh <laughs> So pre- I don't know. It seems like magic to me. I saw five or six different uh, videos of priests or people in church doing like, uh, wh- what was it called? There was one that was where they were doing a, a praise dance on hoverboards or whatever. Oh. All of this stuff happening in church, including in uh, Indonesia, uh, where there was a Catholic um, oh. uh, priest who huh. decided <laughs> that he was going to do a uh, a hoverboard. S- he did a song, and he went up and down the... Uh, oh, no, not Indonesia. Sorry, Philippines. I, okay, that's I better. Beg your I pardon. was a little confused about... The, but Okay, that makes more sense. I don't know why my brain did that switch up. But yes, Philippines. And this guy is going up and down the aisles of his congregation, singing into a microphone with uh, on his hoverboard. <laughs> in in his vestments, he looks great. He's it's like he's like he's flying a little bit. Um, apparently, the Catholic Church does not approve. What? They don't go in for these shenanigans. Now, come on. How can they? How can they not approve? Nope. The diocese uh, said that's right out. They said uh, that he <laughs> uh, he will be out of the parish and will spend no. some time to reflect on this event. <laughs> the inappropriateness. Yeah. He uh, is, apparently you, you cannot do that. Um, Why not? It, uh, where's the quote? I'm um, actually angry about. He this. was wrong. It is the church's the the a mass is the church's highest form of worship. Consequently, it is not a personal celebration where one can capriciously introduce something to get the attention of the people. You don't want their attention. Don't get their... God, you don't want them paying attention to what's going on up here. This is Catholicism. For centuries, they would do their mass in a language nobody yeah. understood. They don't want you they don't, paying attention. Don't know what's going on. Just know when you're supposed to stand up and sit down <laughs> and uh, and say peace and say and also with you when uh, someone says peace be with you or whatever yeah. the fuck they do. Yeah, it's something like that. Anyway, the, yes, I think that that's very funny. Uh, but if, But it will continue in the Protestant religions. Mark my words. Hoverboards. Oh yeah. The wave of the church future. Oh yeah. I Up can't and down wait. The aisle. Here's what I can't wait for. The if the videos have started coming out. So far we haven't seen the videos of the priests tumbling down off of their hoverboards. Nobody ever falls off those things. <laughs> They're coming. Those videos are coming. I'm very excited. <laughs> priests are uh, gonna be like right. eating shit all day long on oh. those hoverboards. <laughs> okay. Huh, all right. Anyway, if you have something that you're looking forward to and you want to let us know about it, you can contact us. We are uh, we are reachable at podcast at thankgodimatheist.com. And if you'd also maybe want to leave us a voicemail. Sure. You can call us. The number is 424-666-8442. Go to the Facebook page, facebook.com slash TGI Atheist, and click that like button. And while you're on Facebook, search for the TGIA Members Only Lounge a and request group. to join. You can't get in unless I tell you to. Yeah, you can. Yeah. But so. uh, people won't know what it is. Right. Yeah. Because it's a closed group. It's a closed group. So, yes, it doesn't say atheist anywhere on it. It just says TGIA Members Only Lounge. So if, you, uh, if you're not out or if you're not comfortable with everybody on your Facebook feed knowing about mm-hmm. your, your views, mm-hmm. you will be safe. Yes, indeed. All right. Well, we're going to take a quick break. Uh, this is some audio, some very revealing audio, um, of a couple older evangelists by the, by the name of Kenneth Copeland and Jesse Duplantis. Uh, and they are, <laughs> oh, they're, they're having a conversation about why, well, they're, they're just trying to defend the fact that they have private jets. That's what this they, is all they about. They have private jets, and, uh, <laughs> and you need to know that it's very important for the, them the, to have it. And God wants them to have them. Yeah. Brother Copeland, I was flying home from a meeting, and I had come out of a glorious meeting. I had just finished, me and Cruffalo Dollar were preaching. Had a glorious meeting. As I was going home, the Lord, real quickly, he said, Jesse, do you like your plane? Now, you know, I thought that's an odd statement. He gave, I said, well, certainly, Lord. He said, do you really like it? And I thought, well, yes, Lord. He said, then he said this, so that's it? I didn't know how to handle that for a man. I went, what? 
He said, you're going to let your faith stagnate? Now, when he said that, that shocked me. I went, whoa, wait. I literally unbuckled my seatbelt, my plane. I stood up. My pilots looked around and said, do you need something? I said, no, no, I'm talking to God right now. And, they just, <laughs> and he went back to flying. I said, Lord, I don't think I was letting my faith stagnate. He said, so this is all I could ever do. I said, you want, you, you're trying to tell me something. He said, go to the book of Amos. So if you had the book of Amos, I want to read may, the scripture. May I right interrupt now. you there yes, for a second? Mm -hmm. You couldn't have done that on an airliner. No, sir. No way. Stand up and say, what'd you say, Lord? No. Okay, no, yeah. And the guy sitting over there saying, what the hell does he think he's doing? <laughs> you can't do you that. You can't do that. No, no. This, this is so important. And those of you that are, that are just now coming into these things, um, in, in the first place, Jesse and, 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 and I and, and others, Keith Moore and Creflo and all of us, they, the world is in such a shape, we can't get there without this. That's right. We've got to have this. We would have, the mess that the airlines are in today, I would have to stop. I'm being very conservative. At least 75 to 80, more like 90 percent of mm -hmm. what we're doing, because you can't get there can't, from here. It's impossible. So we we ha and and this was such a good illustration. I just mm -hmm. the, the Lord impressed me. That's why we're on that airplane. We can talk to oh, God. Glory we to can, God. We, it's true. We, it, it's when I was flying for Oral Roberts, the uh, brother Deweese, my mm -hmm. my boss on the airplane. He said, "Now, Kenneth, this is sanctuary." It protects the anointing on, on uh, uh, Brother, Brother Roberts. Roberts. And he said, you keep your mouth shut. Don't talk to him unless he talks. Because when he's on a meeting, he doesn't talk to anybody but God. Now, Oral used to fly airlines. Right. But it, even back mm -hmm. there then, man, mm -hmm. it, it got to the place where it was agitating his spirit, sure. people coming up to him. He right. had become famous, and they wanted him to pray for him and right. all that. You, you can't. You, you can't manage that today. Right. The, this dope-filled world. Right. And get in, an air, get in a long tube with a bunch of demons. Right. That's exactly the And it, it's deadly. And, and it works on your heart. It really does. So I, anyway, I, I wanted to make that clear so the devil can't lie to you and say, see there, them preachers spending uh, all that money, just, just fat cats riding around. No, we're not. We're in business. To do. Listen, I could scratch my flying itch with... My little single engine, open cockpit airplane. Right. I just come home, fly around in that, and scratch my flying. It that doesn't have nothing to do with that. But right. we're in we're in we're in soul business here. Right. We, we got a dying world around us. Just we got a dying nation around us. That's right. And we can't even get there on the And you ca you can't. Let, let me give you an example. <laughs> well, well, Dan, uh, I I I, uh, I buy it. It it. I, I see the it need. It makes logical sense. You can't stand up on a, on an airliner. No. And, you know, if you're flying commercial, no. what are you going to do? Talk to God? You'd, you'd look like a crazy person. Yeah, yeah. This is what they're saying. Yeah. I'd look like a crazy man if, yeah. I, if I did what I'm pretending like I did. <laughs> if I did what I'm telling you that I did on, in public... Yeah. Everybody think I was nuts. Well, he should be flying. What is it, Singapore Air? That has like the private room. Oh yeah, that's that's he can still nice. fly commercial, but did, they don't go from from, from Raleigh, New to Orleans Chicago. to Chicago to Raleigh to. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh, they need their jets. They need their jets. They need them. You know, I don't blame them. I wonder what percentage of people flying around in private jets are. Are, are religious, <laughs> no, are, are, are evangelists, right? Getting from point A to point B. I just, I just C, wonder, you know, B. you get these celebrities with their private jets. I wonder if those guys, if God oh, talks to them too, tells well, them it, that they're stagnating. I bet he talks to Johnny Depp. Oh, you know he talks to Johnny Depp. Probably a lot about stagnation, actually. Johnny Depp is God, isn't he? <laughs> Johnny Depp's the one that's talking to these guys. <laughs> Stagnate. Psst. <laughs> Look up Amos. Uh, uh, anyway, all right, we'll move on. All right. Um, we had some folks write into us. Uh, Indeed. And, uh, and, and, and a call, I think. Uh, yeah. Michelle wrote in, <clears throat> said, uh, just wanted to thank you for the... Uh, this, this is a little bit in reference to our uh, cultural appropriation uh, discussion uh -huh. a couple weeks ago, which got a lot of attention. Yeah. Uh, we didn't... We, 
we're not going to discuss everything that everybody brought up because uh, a lot of it would just take an entire other show. And yeah, and, and it's not. Thank God, I'm not I'm, culturally appropriating. <laughs> thank it's... God, I'm a, I'm culturally <laughs> sensitive. That's not the name of the show. We opened a can of worms. Uh, yeah. We'll. We just want the discussion to happen. You guys can uh, can discuss it with your friends and family to some extent. But we did want to uh, answer a few a few things uh, that won't take the entire show to to get through. Indeed, um, Michelle says, "Just wanted to thank you for your eye opening Halloween revelation. I had never considered that I could be culturally appropriating demons by dressing up as sexy Satan. <laughs> I'm forever in your debt." You're sincerely smartass. Yeah, she's mocking us. She's mocking us. Oh my god! Rude. It's <sighs> just rude. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what's next? Uh, Rebecca wrote in. Uh, I've always thought it strange, even when I was a Christian, that people swore on the Bible. Uh, we were talking to remember about uh, yeah. pe- about the the judge swearing in on the Quran. I agree. I think it's weird too. Well, here's what she says. James five twelve says not to swear by heaven or earth. Let your yes be yes and your no be no, so you will not be condemned. Matthew 5.34 says similar. So in a Christian sense, it is a sin to say any more than yes or no. Wow. She's right. She's I right. looked it up. Swearing huh? on anything other than just say, affirming your word is, uh, is forbidden. Is, oh is, God. It, told, they're told not to do it. Courts are even worse off than I thought. They're swearing on the very book that's telling them, don't do this. <laughs> the very book. <laughs> that's amazing. Uh, one, uh, yeah, okay. All right. Good. Thanks. Thanks Good. Actually, what? that makes me happy. Yeah. I think people should be swearing on the Bible. Right. Because it's, uh, yes, exactly. Because it says it's, not to. Right. It's like basically declaring yourself a hypocrite. Yeah. Uh, while you're trying to be, while you're trying to declare yourself fit for whatever office you're being sworn in. Yes, for. indeed. Uh, we have a voicemail, I think, don't we? We do. I'm just going to go ahead and play it. Good. Hi, my name is Jordan from North Carolina, Greensboro, Asheville area. Um, I just wanted to get you guys' opinion on something. Um, I was listening to your podcast, and it made me think about it. I am a black, uh, half black, half Japanese young man, and I have a lot of friends who are PC, politically correct, and it's great. But I posted on Facebook saying that I didn't think assimilation was such a bad thing, and I feel that if we keep, if us as black people keep separating ourselves from other groups, um, humans as people keep separating ourselves from other groups when we're all the same, then that's what's going to cause a lot of problems. I just wanted to see if you guys had any opinions on it, really. But, um, yeah, thanks. That's an interesting uh, part of the discussion that we didn't really get too much into. Yeah. Uh, and I, and I, I'm glad that you brought it up. Was it Jordan? Jordan, yeah. Jordan. Uh, by the way, I've been to Greensboro, North Carolina. It's quite nice. Really? It's a charming little town. Well, there you have it. Um, I, uh, I, I think that part of the problem... It, is that uh, is not with assimilation as a as a concept. Assimilation is fine. I think the the problem well, it's, it's whether or not you're so it, it, you should never feel forced to assimilate right to the dominant culture. Right? Exactly. So the idea is that our all our culture as Americans is supposed to be a pluralistic society. Right. It's supposed to be able to to have people from all kinds of different right. cultures and backgrounds. So you shouldn't have to, um, you know, change uh, certain aspects of yourself in order to get a job. Right. Exactly. You it, know, if that, you that's, if that's, you want to assimilate, great. That's right. to- you're totally fine to do that. Right. The problem is that our society like treats you shittily if you don't assimilate and that's and and that's a problem i mean it's a problem of like you know if jordan submits a resume to a company without a picture right he's gonna do okay but if his friend you know if if he has a friend jamal who Mm. submits a a resume he's gonna have a he's gonna get fewer calls and uh, yeah and uh and you know even if they're uh exactly the same uh you know um 
level of qualifications. Qualifications, right. Qualifications, yeah. Right. So the, the, that, I think, is the problem. The problem isn't that assimilation is bad. The problem is that f- no one should be required or expected to assimilate if right. they don't want to. Right. So I think that's where that where that one shakes down. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, uh, oh, we had a, a I had a donor uh, on the on the uh, PayPal side of things. Fantastic. Um, Catherine has become a monthly donor, and so I wanted to thank you very much for your monthly donation. That's very sweet. That's wonderful. And then over on Patreon, uh, we have two new patrons, uh, Denise and Jaded. Okay. And uh, so thank you very much for uh, signing up on Patreon. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. You guys are definitely better people than the people who haven't signed up for Ooh, these things. Damn, that's, that just <laughs> feels gross before you even finish saying it. <laughs> I kid. I kid. Um, heaven. Heaven. I'm in heaven. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, you and I, Franklin, were chatting about near-death experiences yeah the infamous ndes yeah as they've come to be known on the interwebs because <laughs> they're so common apparently uh, well they are now uh it's of course something that's going to happen a lot more as medicine gets better and better as yeah. as because yeah the reason it didn't happen ever or or it was so rare in times past is because they were shitty at medicine yeah but there, i'm sure there were there were moments, there yes. were things that would happen to people that yep. get clunked on the head. They say Rasputin came back to life. <gasps> there you go. Um, oh my goodness. But uh, we were talking about all of these people and, and, and what it means mm. that these people seem to die mm. and then come back. Yes. And then report. And yeah, and they say things that don't completely jab with the whole with each other with each other or with uh, you know the bible with the bible because that's what's important right yeah there's sure. a problem yeah you were saying what were you saying about uh about lifeway whatever the christian church or yeah, the christian the, the, stores those, uh, lifeway christian stores they're, they, they're they're bookstores right yeah uh but then they'll have like and various inspiring t-shirt acc- accoutrement um they'll have some christian candles some really boring board game some, yeah yeah uh, action figures from the bible lots that of, kind of crap lots of dvds with sean astin in them <laughs> um they actually have, um, according to this article, completely pulled all um, heaven visitation books. That's uh, the genre, I guess, huh. um, from their shelves. They uh, it's it's problematic for them. Yeah, uh, and uh, especially after uh, I mean, we we actually talked about it last year when it happened. The the kid who had the the um the boy who came back from heaven i think was the the title of the thing. right uh and uh he actually ended up admitting that he'd made the whole thing up right just to get some attention and then it got away from him uh-huh and then of course you know like paid for college and sure and then uh then he came clean yeah uh but um yeah so it, it, it's kind of it's a trick it's a bit of a dicey uh situation I, now there, you know, we won't get into NDE too much, nah. other than to say that, I mean, a lot of neuroscientists are now are now exploring the possibility that uh, when you hit an a, an NDE state, uh-huh. uh, you release DMT <gasps> into your system, really? which is essentially uh, a hallucinogen. Oh yeah, and then you it's a great one. You go to a fancy place far away. Yeah. For a, for a minute. Or for however long, because you lose track of time and all that sort of thing. <laughs> Not that I've done DMT. Don't ever get that idea from me. Oh, um, Dan. But uh, it is interesting. And, you know, there's so there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of people that write about heaven and write about uh, near death experiences. Uh-huh. You know, uh, it, it, I think it's fair to ask the question. You know, there, there was the one guy that got really famous. Um Eben Alexander uh, wrote a book called Proof of Heaven, A Neurosurgeon's Journey into the Afterlife. Uh, that douchebag. Yeah. We talked about him a while back, too. A long time ago, we talked about yeah. him. Uh, 
and he, and, and you he know, was particularly douchey. I didn't like him at all. Well, and the he, child was kind of cute. And <laughs> yeah, innocent, yeah. But he. Well, this guy had extra cred because he was a neurosurgeon because he was oh, a yeah. brain surgeon. So oh. you'd think that he he'd know about. Wrong. No, I mean um, Ben Carson. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> uh, it, yeah, and it turns out that neurosurgeons and neuroscientists are very different things. Oh wait, he was he, he was a neuroscientist. No, he was a neurosurgeon. Oh, okay. And I'm saying that like that's a different study than the study of what actually happens in the brain when someone dies. Uh, he claimed that his right. that no, he that, had that makes total yeah. He had no uh, frontal cortex uh, activity at all. Like he was brain dead. Uh-huh. And then when he came back, he had all these memories of being in heaven. Uh, I think it's fair to ask if your brain is dead, where did the memories come from? Because memories are stored in your brain. Yeah. Uh, that's a brain function. No, we all know, Dan. Yeah. That um, the spirit, the human spirit, oh, that special wispy yeah. thing that goes off to heaven. It talks to your brain. It talks to, yeah, they, they're in constant communication. <laughs> it's not unlike the relationship on uh, Star Trek Next, uh, not Next Generation, um, <laughs> uh, Deep Space Nine, <laughs> oh, where. <laughs> Dax, the trill, right? She has her symbiont implant, right? Oh, of course. It's not unlike that relationship. It's really very much the same. <laughs> uh, very much the same. I think we can all relate to that. Um, uh, it's interesting, though. When when asked about that problem of the uh, the brain not having memories from a time when it wasn't active, uh-huh. uh, he did respond that uh, he believes that the mind can exist without the brain. Oh, of course. Mm, deep. That. The mind. Mm, the mind, the you guys. The mind. He doesn't have any... Uh, mm, the human mind. Yeah. So anyway, there's a lot of problems with it, but uh, <laughs> I think I think what we ended up deciding was that the concept of heaven yeah. is the problematic thing here. Oh, yeah. Because uh, uh, it's, it's a bit of a wackadoo concept. <laughs> Uh, you were reading a, 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 an article uh, a, from a theologian. Th- yes, I was on RNS and uh, That's reading the this. religious news service. For yeah. those of you who don't know, uh, and uh, reading along, and yeah, he the RNS was asking him. It was just a Q and A, right? Uh-huh. So they would ask questions about like you know what happens to babies. Right. You know, where, where, where do you land on this topic of babies in heaven? <laughs> ba- do and, babies and he says, there? well, you know, quite frankly, uh, there's nothing biblical about babies in heaven. <laughs> you know, and he goes on to talk about how God is good and just and he'll make good, dis- good choices. And right. His choices will naturally inherently be good. Right. So you so, don't have to worry about what the actual choice is. Because just, it's the right choice. Just know he'll so, get it right. Even if the God's choice is to <laughs> damn babies to hell who aren't baptized, which may well happen, that may be the case. Um, it's good. It's good because God made that choice. God knows. God knows, and you you will understand it better in the afterlife, and you'll feel okay. About like those he knew in hell. the second that baby was born right. that that dude was going to be a little shit. Well, and yeah, he, and so he killed him and uh-huh. he sent him to hell. Yeah. I don't know how, like, your Hitlers and Pol Potts get through. Um, oh, sometimes he just wants to see what happens. <laughs> sometimes he's just look at, he's like, holy shit, that dude is fucked up. <laughs> Let's see what happens. This is going to play out So is that basically weird. what you're saying, though, Dan, is all babies that die before being baptized were Pol Potts or... or uh, they were worse. Or Hitlers? They were even worse. Worse than that, wow. Worse than Hitler. That's terrible, Dan. I can't believe you would say something like that. I can't um, believe it, too. I'm outraged. But he also asks about, or I'm sorry, RNS also asks about um, uh, uh, pets in oh, heaven. Oh, okay. Yeah. And he continues on. And, and, and he's like, you know, again, like, God is good, and God created this planet. He goes in this whole thing about, like, heaven and earth, can, like, melding into each other and all Jesus. this crap. Um, but then he's like, he's like, I don't know about your dog. But my Bichon will be in heaven, with me, <laughs> which I thought was amazing. And then, um, and then he asks about um, people who've never heard the Chris- Christian gospel. Do you think they have a chance to make it to heaven? And this is what he says. 
Um, this is the right time for a cop out. Yes. But he doesn't take it. <laughs> I go back to what I said about babies. God is good. God is love. God is just. They are in the hands of this loving, good, and just God. There's no better place to be. But I do know this. Jesus is the template of the new heavens and the new earth. I know heaven is designed by and for Jesus, so the only ones in heaven will be those who are in Christ. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then this, this, so this, you know, God is just and everything, but yeah. uh, fuck you. You had no chance to hear about Jesus? You're, yep. you're, you're, not, you're not in heaven, and you know what's not heaven, right? Yeah. It's hell. That's right. Hell. And, and this this led us, Dan, to sort of the, the comment of, my goodness, Joseph Smith might have gotten this one right. But yeah. You know? Mormons have answered this question. Like, they, yeah. like, it's clearly bullshit to say that someone who was raised by people that they had no control over being raised by. Yeah who never got any word about Jesus, like the thought that they, the pe those people go to hell on yeah. that technicality is crazy. It, and it, it's bothered people for centuries. Right. And so Joseph Smith comes along and he just goes, I'm not going to worry about it. That's not a problem. Here's how it works. Yeah. And he comes up with, and this is going to, this, if you've ever been creeped out by the whole baptisms for the dead thing, this is the Mormon mechanism for fixing this problem. Right. So everybody gets a chance. Everybody gets the possibility yeah. of of getting the full the full God experience in the afterlife. That lady in Mongolia who was born, raised, and died without ever hearing any uh Jesus. Right. God bless her. I'm so jealous. <laughs> She's dead. She's yeah. in she's in uh sort of the spiritual waiting room. Yeah. Uh and she's uh hanging out. Yeah. She's got centuries, she's got millennia to hang out. Yeah. And here's what the Mormons come along and do. They baptize her here on earth <laughs> and then send that up to heaven and go, Hey, you know, it's it, you know, she gets her, she opens her email and it's like bing. Yeah. You've got baptism. Do you do you do you accept, accept or, or, or decline? Yeah. And meanwhile, she's looking around. She's seeing that there's uh, clearly life after death. I think she says yes. Well, and she also looks around. She goes, you know, these Mormons, they clearly have this. They're, they're running this place. They got it figured out. So, uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. And this is how that whole Mormon theology works. Right. And Mormons will be quick to point out to you, to anyone who's offended by the practice of baptisms for the dead, Mormons are quick to say, well, they can just turn it down. They can. Yeah. They don't have to be baptized. <laughs> this is just, we do it for them. Right. And then we send it along. On their behalf. On their behalf. Yeah. For and in the, the name the, of. There are no exhumed bodies. No, no, no. Baptism That's true. Baptisms of the dead sounds so <laughs> horrifying. Right. Right. It's not baptisms of the dead. <laughs> it's for the dead. Yeah. So like you and I, you did it, right? As a, oh, yeah. as a younger person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did it as a youth. We'd go, you go to the to the temple and you go to a, a baptismal font and uh, you get in the the creepy white clothes mm -hmm. uh, that cling a little too uh awkwardly for yeah a, a perv designed these yeah I'm, I'm gonna say i'm them gonna them say over over yeah i've had multiple gay friends tell me that while they were doing <laughs> baptism for the dead they were worried about getting a boner because all the other boys's junk was just oh yeah clearly on display yeah yeah because white when wet. Yeah. And clean and, and no, like, layers. And it's all baggy and stuff. <laughs> anyway, uh, we may have strayed a little bit. Hang on. Let me just try and pull that back to the topic. Uh, uh, yeah. Dis uh, distracted by the pervy. Yes. Yeah. It is per Oh, and when the girls do it. Oh, uh, it's unfortunate. I think some of the, you know, every now and then, because men have to perform the ceremony, but yeah. girls can do the baptisms for the dead. And I've had multiple girls, women tell me that when they were doing it, it was the, the men got creepy. Oh, the, the men who were doing it were, because the, you're not allowed to wear like a bra under that stuff. So it's just, yeah. Anywho, you guys can all imagine how that goes. Uh, the idea here is that what happens is that you get into the water, they dunk you, and each time they do it, they say the prayer that, that goes with baptism, and they say, I baptize you for and in the name of 
Jose, whatever, uh-huh. and then sploosh, and then I baptize you for it in the name of... Yeah, you do like 10 or 12 in a row or yeah. whatever, right? Right. And uh, and the idea is that eventually they'll get to everyone. Mm-hmm. Everyone who has ever lived mm-hmm. on this earth yeah. forever, <laughs> they'll eventually get to. And that's what the millennium is all Oh yeah, there's a, there's a whole thousand years that'll be set aside at some point yeah. for them to do this work. They'll be doing the work, and uh, clearly there are not um, uh, parish records no. <laughs> that can be, information can be gleaned from for everyone in the world. Who has ever existed. Who has ever lived. And right. so... Um, so they'll get magic they, they, records. They, yeah, they'll have magic. Heaven, <laughs> heaven's records will be opened up, yeah. and they'll be able to get everyone baptized for the dead but the idea but here's the thing mormons and heaven mormons have done a pretty interesting thing with heaven mm-hmm. so they've taken so first of all they've taken away the, the the worry that someone will go to hell just because there's technicalities right then what they did was they split heaven up into three places mm-hmm. and kind of got rid of hell yeah for all intents yeah. and purposes there is no hell. They they don't use the word hell. No, there they is don't. no hell in they, Mormon theology. There is this place that they call outer darkness, uh, and in order to get to outer darkness, you have to do something so idiotic that no person, no being, would ever actually do it. Well, like Cain is probably there, right? Don't they always say that Cain is there? No, no. You have to you have to know Christ, huh. and then deny him. Huh. So who's there? Satan. Nobody. Satan. Satan, maybe. The devil. But it's like, yeah, there's like... The adversary. Who would do that? If you know Christ, yeah. then you don't... It's like, you know, I don't even... I wouldn't even do that with, like, my friend Bob. Yeah. If I know Bob, I don't deny Bob. Because... Maybe I, you were forced to, like at gunpoint. <laughs> yeah, then right. it doesn't count. <laughs> nobody goes <laughs> Nobody goes to outer darkness. So the idea is that you just you just go to either... Good heaven, better heaven, or best heaven, or best heaven, <laughs> and also there's a VIP lounge in best heaven. Yeah, if you're lo- really good, you can go to the VIP oh, lounge. It's so nice, <laughs> so nice. But it's Mormon, so it's not going to be. Boy. It's not going to be fun. No, and I mean they'll have so many fun parlor games though, and their like, fancy the is board so bad. Oh God, it's so bad. Dan, have you ever eaten out in Utah County? Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yes. It's not. They don't know. There's a small little local chain called Blue Lemon. Are you familiar with uh-huh. Blue Lemon? Have I'm, you eaten at a Blue Lemon? Uh, no, I have not. It's not bad. The food's not bad. Okay. Actually, the food is, is, is quite all right. Okay. Um, but it's like, it's like we're like down in Utah County. Uh-huh. I went, I went to blue lemon and it's like Al- very, Alpine. Area. Utah County is, is the Mormoniest. It's, it's a very Mormon. Yeah. It's yeah. And the ladies who lunch in Alpine, oh, and yeah. there are ladies who lunch oh, in yeah. Alpine. They were all at <laughs> blue lemon. Uh-huh. And so it's like counter service. You go up, you, you order at the counter and then they give you a little, uh, it's not really a pager. Like you have to go back, but it like, it's well, it's a table marker, right? Yeah, yeah. And you go out and uh, you go to the table, and you wait for the food to be delivered. Uh-huh. And it's all like it's nicely prepared food, like, but it's, it's not fancy. It's not fancy. It's not, but it's nicely prepared. Ugh. And you know, it's on a it's on a proper plate. It's not like on sure. you know throwaway disposable stuff. And uh, and that's like their dining out. Yeah, it's. Horrifying. I went to I went to a place called the Grove. Okay, have you heard of the Grove? I've heard of it. I've never been. They have fake lemon trees all over, so that it feels oh. very, uh, very like California. Oh yeah, the sort Grove. of thing. Yeah, okay. um, it's beautiful. I, I went there in Provo. This was about as fancy as Provo gets, uh-huh. uh, and it, with fake lemon trees. Oh yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> and like this really like shitty, like the way the tables were set up with like napkin folds from the 80s that mm-hmm. you know we would have thought were pretty fancy 20 30 40 years ago right and then and and, and uh, one doesn't need to mention of course the fact that this fancy restaurant is in a strip mall <laughs> is in a mall yeah you know an outdoor walking mall not a strip mall okay. uh, their nicest 
outdoor walking mall. Is the river bottom oh, whatever yes. it's called? Oh, yeah. yes. Okay. So, so yeah. Nice. That's about as fancy as they get. Yeah. The Mormons. Yeah. Or the roof. The roof is as fancy as they the get. The roof is probably just as fancy as they get. The Mormons uh, mm. in, on Temple Square in downtown Salt Lake, uh, if you... It, it's a, it's got a lovely view, uh-huh. and it's a, it's at the top of the what used to be the Hotel Utah, which was a beautiful hotel, and it's yeah, tragic it's that it's that's... not there anymore. It, but now it's a Mormon owned church uh, offices and stuff. But at yeah. the top, it's uh, it's the roof, the roof buffet restaurant. It's a buffet. It's 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 a fancy buffet, <laughs> and it's plenty expensive. Oh yeah, but uh, anyway. Yeah. But so my bring your own alcohol, the conception, Mormon conception of like what the, 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 that inner VIP room is going to be or would be if it existed. Yeah. Is so it's gotta be so fucking sad. It's like whatever the nicest piece of furniture is the nicest corner of rc willie just picture you know. the best marriott hotel you've ever <laughs> been to in your life like they te- they took it up three or four notches yeah. for this marriott yeah yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. mormon heaven that's mormon heaven yeah you're totally right so there mm, you go so uh nice. otherwise what the hell is heaven otherwise it's just like what people walking around in white people walking around in white all your family's there the ones who made it, um, and then what? Like what? What are we? What are they? What is everybody so desperate to work towards? Well, not hell, not hell. That's yeah. what heaven is. Heaven is just bliss. Well, it's like eternal bliss with your family, which is a contradiction. In and of itself, <laughs> yeah, but. I mean, I've I've <laughs> met a lot of people's family. It's not. <laughs> Oh God! I I don't know. I it's, I think heaven is a con- one of those concepts that you that is best for the believers, best kept Unexamined. unspecified. <laughs> don't really think too hard about this one. Just know heaven's good, hell's bad, and you don't and you don't want to go to the the bad one. Yeah, that's all you need to know. Yeah. Uh, uh. All, right. all right. Well, if you guys have anything you'd like to say, tell us your heaven. Tell us about what uh what. Atheist heaven. Atheist heaven you could concoct. Or mm. talk to us about what your religion, when you were growing up, did about heaven. Cookie. Because I'll bet ideas. there's some fun heaven heaven <laughs> ideas out there. And hell, too. Oh. Uh, you can reach us by contacting us podcast at thankgodimatheist.com. Or you can leave us a voicemail message. The telephone number is 424-666-8442. Go to the Facebook page, facebook.com slash Atheist. And while you're there on Facebook, search for the TGIA Members Only Lounge and request to join. It's yeah, cool. yeah. Um, if you want to become a supporter of our mm-hmm. podcast, uh, we would sure appreciate it. You can go to thank God, thank God yes. and click on the Patreon or the uh, PayPal support buttons uh-huh. uh, and help us in our campaign to uh, make this thing actually uh, even better. <laughs> we'll figure it out. Uh, but we, 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 we really appreciate uh, your support. Yes, we do. Thanks to the Red Rock Hot Club for uh, for their music. And thanks to Mackenzie for all of your help on Facebook. It's invaluable. Yes, and thank you, dearest of listeners, for tuning in. Bye! Bye!